CIU Nation, the CIU podcast, the Bottom Vision, wherever you are, whether it's at night or during the day, our listener, YouTuber, we are very happy to be back. And I'm here today with Professor Chris Kempsey. Welcome, Professor. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Thank you. I'm glad to be here for our the third part series in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Right, wonderful Bill of Rights, the rights of the Americans. We travel to yes. this. We we'll take our right to over the flight. I'm here. I'm going to play my flag in uh, which country? Uh, Indonesia. And you got to yes. follow what I said because I am an American. I got freedom of expression and how to live, how to sell your food, how to cook your food, and how to listen to me tell you what you should do. Anyway, this country have their own law. So let's go back to our fundamental. Um, you know, we talked about the first one. We went through the first amendment. Today we'll cover with our uh, the second amendment and the third um what is one or two podcasts we'll do today the series but a series of two or three uh covering uh, the right to bear arms the, the second amendment which has two parts militia and individual right to protect himself and then we we'll talk about the third amendment and the squatters often not been done today but you know often done during the war time but we we'll try to cover them the best we can and uh, as I'm the moderator, as usual, and I'm here with Professor Kempson, and he's going to go through those parts gradually with us. And if I need to jump in, we we'll keep talking, but primarily he has the flow. So, Professor Kempson, we know they've been in the news, they've been pursuing. Uh, people say, well, this wasn't what it intended. We don't have this today. Why do we have to be extreme? There's so many killings. We got against us, we got so many people, you know, all over the place that, you know, it's becoming very dangerous to go out sometimes, you're at the theater, somebody's shooting at you, you at Walmart, somebody's shooting at you, you know, serious thing happening in Texas and many different parts of the state, well, it's about it's Vegas, people watching concert, and this guy is shooting at them, and AK-47, all of these things have come into play, uh, Malaysia, all of this, so we try, let's try to go through these things and see what the Constitution says. That's the original knowledge of the Constitution, what it says, and there have been challenges in these cases going through the uh, different court system. But we want to stick with the original, you know, language of the, of, you know, what it stands for, the Constitution. So let me let you, you know, separate these parts. Maybe first we can start with the militia and see, and then of course we can go to the other part. But you decide how you want to go. So I give you the floor. Go ahead. Let, let, let me let you see how you listen to the podcast. That the winner should not keep talking. Let us not give it the. Professor Kim seemed to give us some explanation. Okay, go ahead. Professor. So, good morning, and good afternoon, or good day, or good evening to our listeners. As a, I would call myself a moderate originalist when it comes to constitutional law, and in looking at that, the Second Amendment is most most people know this is this is my right. This is to protect my guns. Well, that's true, but it's a little more in depth. And a little more involved than that. So the Second Amendment has two main clauses, what we call the militia clause. Mm -hmm. And plain language, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. So again, when this was written, we had to have that militia to protect the individuals, to protect our form of government from mm -hmm. tyranny. So that basically emphasizes the importance uh, of the well-regulated militia for the security of a free state. That's important. A free state mm -hmm. acknowledges the role of an organized military force and maintain the security and liberty of a nation. So not just our own personal individual liberties, but the security of the nation overall, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which is crucial, which is why the founding fathers, you know, put that in there as the Second Amendment. The second half of that, the right to bear arms clause. And it's very simple, very succinct language. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Yeah. And as an original, as an originalist looking at that, basically that part affirms the right of people to keep and bear arms. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say what type of arms. It doesn't say how many. It just simply in simple, plain language, the right of people to keep and bear arms. Mm -hmm. And that, that particular sentence has been a subject of debate, legal interpretation, 
congressional congressional hearings, arguments left and right, discourse left and right. Through the years, ever since the Constitution was drafted, what does this mean? Well, so that's why we have the rule of law. That's why we have a legislature who takes that and crafts laws around that as the will of the people being the governed. And then the judiciary branch taking that law and saying, is this good law or is this bad law? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you, you know, go back to the militia, we know Pony Fathers at the time, we had, uh, well, the, the country was in Seattle, so people, young men would volunteer to go to war and defend the country, protect the state. And so, again, we said regulator. We, of course, didn't mean you should have a splinter group, you know, go into bushes and coming together, so we have militia group, and nobody do what they don't. And they can always bought on other people's property in the farm area, you know, in a part of the country. And they just show up and take take away people's things like the kings used to, used to do in those days in England. Uh, that's not regulated. That's not, you know, what we're talking about. They, they can bear arms, but that's different from what it was at the time who volunteer to protect the country or not to come together as a group that are not regulated and just, you know, go all out and set up their own laws and do their own thing. But, it, but that is not actually being practiced today, right? Generally, we don't have that militia regular issue because we got organized army and we got, you know, reserve and other things, you know, different security system, police, other things that actually protect, that are entrusted to protect the country and things. But still, if a state decide to have that or forbid that and regulate that, that's in the constitution as well. Now, when, when we talk about it, you, you're right, you know, because they actually say, what happened if he's, Mentally retired, he has mental problems. Should he bear arms? What happens if it is an AK for the seller and he's just killing people? He is supposed to be for self defense, it's supposed to be for protection of your family, of yourself. You can't just have guns that go all around you and shoot people. I mean, I must, I must say that, oh, a fellow had a gun and he actually killed my nephew. And, you know, you know they were together and, and they went, both of them were like married, married or girlfriend of two, two siblings. And they want to see the in laws and the government competition, and he, you know, shot him. But basically, again, he's a felon. He should not have had a gun, but he did. So, like, are we having check and balance? Are we having all of these? Who should have these things? So, all of these things we have in congressional hearing, like you said, and all kinds of opinion rating, and the state, and New York will pass the law, and it's, the code is struck down, California, and other places, uh, in and all, and all of them trying to like, See how they can circumvent the constitution to protect, you know, to prevent people from having uh, arms or a second tell. But again, like you said, it's in clear language, right? It's clear to stay there, the right to bear arms. So I don't know how, with such a plain language, how do you try to circumvent it? I mean, that there could be an amendment, there could be other things that can be done uh, if this, if this, you know, Congress so desire. Selling if they so desire and they can pass the amendment regulation, and other things, but as it stand right now, you know, it's it's probably when you when these law, laws are being attacked. But anyway, go ahead, let me let you jump in and you can well, absolutely. So when you talk about gun control mm -hmm. and, and and how gun control is done, the the, the old uh, the saying, you know, guns don't kill people, people kill people. Mm -hmm. Well, so people <laughs> the the will of the governed, as I as I mentioned, the legislature crafts the laws that are supposed to be the will of the people, the, the, the will of the governed. How do you protect a society? Mm -hmm. Well, then obviously they are, you know, the founding fathers intended for military security forces, those people obviously to have arms. And, and you mentioned that felons. Okay. Well, that, that's a, that's a, a legal or regulatory requirement that the legislature has cracked is saying, okay, there are certain classifications of people that really should not have firearms because they present a danger to society as a whole. Mm -hmm. So how do we do that? Mm -hmm. And so those regulations are, are meant to, to, to for public safety overall. And then, you know, when you take uh, uh, the, the living constitution view versus the originalist view and look at that, well, obviously the founding fathers could not have envisioned person having psychiatric or, you know, mental health problems, having firearms, it just wasn't a concept back then. So the constitution has to be that living document of taking into account, look, we understand we had the legislative body, the, the, the legislative body being the will of the people 
as society adapts and changes, okay, now we're going to grow and that law should grow with it. Mm -hmm. So again, taking what the framers intended versus societal's views and balancing that and then on the scales of justice where obviously the, the judicial branch comes in under the rule of law with the scales of justice, what is fair? What, what is justice in this? So what should the law be? And, you know, when you come to the CIU, you come to the CIU by the College of Law, you definitely understand more in-depth, uh, possess more in-depth knowledge of this subject. We discuss it well in our Constitution class, of uh, course, and, you know, so you, you know, visit us, you know. Um, we see that in this struggle has have been happening for long, like, like Professor Kenton said. We have the executive branch in the past and the executive order that said different things. And of course, that's not what Congress would say. And so what happened with the court? They struck, they struck it down, and there we go. So are they being political, or are they truly following the Constitution? Are they trying to protect the rights of others, or are they trying to protect the vote to follow the, the regulation of what it, comes, what it set out in the Constitution? All of these things are explained in our course when you come out there and come to our university. And so we encourage you to come by, you know, like our videos and keep keep visiting us and listening to us. But these are series to give you to whet your appetite and tell you, you know, these these matters, they, they are serious. Whether you want to become a lawyer or not, it's good to know your rights, to know how the country is regulated. And when you're here for having a discussion, you can say something about it. You know, you know what it's saying. You're just not having a blind come in a conversation, or just sitting there up there and listening to other people like you guys got so much knowledge. But maybe everything the same is wrong. You know, you want to know, you, you know, you start it, you know, and you can always defend yourself. Or again, I mean, if you study law, you, it gives you a lot of other opportunities. It gives it open a broad scope of knowledge for you. And, but this after the what we're learning, uh, the constitutional series, uh, it's been very interesting. We keep, we keep that in, right? Professor Gamson, we got the next one of the visits in the next series. Absolutely. And to, to close out or to go along with the Second Amendment is the Third Amendment, mm -hmm. which is a very simple amendment. No, so, no soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner prescribed by law. Mm -hmm. So basically, again, to, to protect that individual freedom, it, it was to prevent the government from, from forcing soldiers basically into private homes during peacetime without the owner's consent. So again, the, the castle doctrine, the, the home is your castle. It, it's sacrosanct, you know, it, it's an individual right and a, a individual liberty that's protected by the constitution. I mean, and, all right, that's so the government, the constitution said that clearly because it was being practiced by the king of in England, it, it was being done. So just don't come anytime, pay your taxes and pay your taxes, break your house down, do anything they want to do. And your wife would be on the floor crawling on the please help me. No, no, our constitution say that's but there we don't practice that in the United States of America. We done. So we of the people, the free will. We got a constitution. You can't do that during peacetime to go harass people because you're in the military. The military is there to protect the country and the people, but not to create uh how you call it, uh tactic or tra traumatize them in the worst possible way. So that part is clear. It's also clearly written in the Constitution. There's no other way you can interpret it. You can't just go to people's homes and kick them out and say, I'm a soldier, so I'm going to live there for now. You, go find your own house. No, we got to respect the castle, the castle of people. Right. We are not a military regime. We are not a, a militarily controlled government. And not <laughs> and the military answers to, to civil authority. Right. By the way, again, I would say come to Bible College of Law and you will see, you know, we have we have animated classes, discussion of students participate. They have the debate. We sometimes we have the tutorial section. We want them to, to do presentation to understand the material and they can talk to each other, ask questions, and then we have lectures and we go over the whole the whole material in different scenarios to have the students to be well prepared. So thank you so much for listening. Always tuning in. We we look for, we invite you to join into our next episode. Keep listening to us. Professor Kempton. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you in class. Validation, see how you podcast YouTube. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.